Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. I hope you have your coffee with you. I'm a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. And so you're thinking, hey, but it's him Wednesday. I know it's him Wednesday, but we're going to postpone him Wednesday till Friday. So it's just me today. Yep. So I hope you have your coffee. Mm. So good. Good morning, Brenda. Uh, yes. So I'm at home resting my throat. Yes. Good morning, Rob. So good to see you. And you're like, all right, rest away. So welcome to everyone who's coming. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. I'm not kayaking today. Uh, good morning, Valma. Good morning. It's going to be a great day. Good morning, Tanya. Good morning. Laurel, I hope you're having a great day. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. The best sips of coffee are always the first sips. You drink the rest of the coffee, right? Which is fine, but it's always the first like three or four sips that are so good. Yes, good morning, Elaine, and good morning, Elizabeth. It's gonna be a great day. It is going to be a great, great day. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So I am just coming back from vacation and that's where I think I picked this up. Um, Lynn and I were talking, good morning, Karen about uh it was very close quarters <laughs> in the airplane so we're thinking someone said airplanes are petri dishes for disease and i'm like mm. well lynn and i both seem to have whatever this is but anyways <clears throat> praise the lord for medicine and tea and right so rest <laughs> is always good uh so i had i was on this wonderful cruise we went on on the Gaither Caribbean cruise and so wonderful music got to see wonderful people and and visit some very warm tropical islands which is always nice and maybe that's part of what it is with some are really really hot to somewhere where it's not quite so warm so sometimes the change in temperature can do a number on me um but I had the privilege we had the privilege of sitting under the teaching of Kyle Eidelman who we um who is an author and pastor, and he's done several Bible studies that many of us have done from Right Now Media. And what a wonderful opportunity to get to meet him and, and hear him live. And, and he said, you know, we weren't made for this world. We look around at the world and the world's gone crazy, right? Uh, evil is called good and good is called evil. And Jesus said, that this was going to happen, right? If we turn to Matthew 23, we said, he said, um, there would be wars and rumors of wars, there'd be famine and disease. So right from uh, Isaiah, which says, you know, in the last days, there'll be, you know, good will be called evil and evil will be called good. And then Jesus says, you know, famines are going to come, wars and rumors, rumors of war are going to come and there'll be pestilence and, and disease. And then even into to second Timothy, where it says in the, in end days people will be lovers of self and doers of evil and and so we look around the world and we're just like the world has gone crazy and he's like you weren't made for this world this world has been corrupted by sin right um utter depravity right right into our very genes our our beings and our world has been corrupted and that's why it says creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of man right even creation itself has been corrupted and so kyle's like but we weren't made we weren't made to live in this corruption in fact ecclesiastes says that god has put eternity in our hearts and nothing else is going to satisfy right this is so often we get caught up in the everyday things. And we look around and we're like, is this it? And he's like, no, this is not it. As believers in Christ, we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And when we step into that relationship with Jesus, we are just getting a taste of what heaven will be like. And it says that as believers, we are, if then you've been raised with Christ, set your mind on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above and not on things that are on earth for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. 
And so we are to set our minds on things that are above, right? We're to set our mind on, on Jesus and him working all things together. And and that one day he's going to, to come back and, and take us to be with him. And um, Corinthians itself says, therefore we do not lose heart, right? Because when we make sure that our eyes are focused on the right things, set your mind on things that are above, Corinthians says, um, therefore we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, yet inwardly we're being renewed day by day. Though our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Therefore, we do not lose heart, right? We do not lose heart. Yes, is the world falling apart? Yes. Did Jesus predict it would happen? Yes. Did Isaiah predict it would happen? Yes. Did Timothy say, or Paul to Timothy say that was going to happen? Yes, yes, yes. They did. But they said, don't lose heart because this world is not our home. And the best way, I love this, um, Kyle said, sometimes it can be hard to explain what heaven will be like. We know it's going to be good because God is there. We're told that there will be no sun or moon in heaven because God himself will illuminate heaven, right? He is the source of light. And he has said, sometimes the best way to explain heaven is what will not be there. Because that's what creates hope. Like we need a hope that does not disappoint. And so we need to remind ourselves of what is not going to be in heaven. So for instance, things that are not going to be in heaven. Ready? There will be no war. There will be no hate. There will be no suicide bombers. There will be no breakups or poverty. There will be no dementia. There'll be no Alzheimer's. There'll be no divorce. There'll be no cancer. There'll be no illness. There'll be no diseases and miscarriages. There'll be no pride. There'll be no grief. There'll be no pain or abuse. There'll be no death or famine or loneliness or adultery. There'll be no accidents. There'll be no blindness. There'll be no deafness, deafness or sickness. There'll be no theft or jealousy or brokenness. There'll be no rejection, no envy or loss or bitterness. There'll be no depression, no rage, no anger, no insecurity. There will be no fear. There will be no gossip. There will be no cliques or confusion. There will be no um, addiction. There will be no trauma. There will be no funeral homes or nursing homes or orphanages. There will be none of that. Right? There will be none of that. Jesus himself in the book, well, John says this, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye. There will be no more mourning or crying or pain. There will be no death. There will be no tears. There will be none of that in heaven. And so these are the things that we put our hope in. And so when people around us are like this world is going crazy you can agree with them you can say yes it is but my hope is not in this world my hope is in the world to come that because I've put my faith in Jesus Christ he is preparing me for a place that there will be no death there there'll be no war that there will be no hurt there will be no miscarriages there will be no orphanages there will be no bitterness or envy or anger he is preparing me a place where he is king and it's going to be good. And we're going to gather around the throne and we're going to worship this God who has created us to love us and to shower all of his goodness upon us. That is what we were created for. And so I want to encourage you today. Don't be downhearted. I love what, where'd my Bible go? Uh, I love what Jesus says in, in, um, John chapter 14. He says, therefore, I love this, right? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. 
in my father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am. Right? And sometimes we're like Philip, okay? Because Jesus says, you know the place to where I'm going to go, oh, Thomas. And Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way, right? Sometimes we forget about heaven, right? Sometimes we forget about heaven. right Thomas I don't know where you're going Jesus says I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me and so as Greg said we still have work to do there are people that still need to hear this good news right that's why he's tearing some of you are like come Lord Jesus come and that's how the book of Revelation ends it ends with this wonderful uh, invitation to come let me read this to you this is Revelation 22 it says uh, the spirit and the bride say come and let him who hears say come Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. So we have work to do. We have to let people know about this invitation to heaven that God has extended to us through Jesus Christ. Right? Because until we're finished the work, Jesus is going to tarry. That's just the way it is. Right? He is, wait he is waiting until the fullness of time. So we don't lose heart. We don't lose heart. We don't have to be downhearted. We, we are in agreement that, yep, the world's messed up. But a better place is coming. And that's what we set our focus on. And that's what we can encourage other pe people with. The fact that God has created us for something more. And we get to experience it when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. And so the Holy Spirit working in us changes us right so that we can accomplish the tasks that he has for us that's so good this is good news all right let's pray lord the world's gone crazy good is called evil and evil is called good media twists what we see and we start to believe it as truth our own selves right? The heart is deceitful above all else. Yet you said, you are the way, the truth, and the life. So we can know the truth by putting our faith in you. We can experience the life by setting our, our eyes on the things to come. And we can walk the way through the power of your Holy Spirit. So Lord, help us not to be downhearted. But may we experience a fullness of joy that comes from knowing that you are preparing a place for us and for anyone who puts their faith in you. This world is not our home. But until you call us home, we have work to do. And through the power of your Holy Spirit, we can accomplish that work. So help us, Lord, put our hand in yours today. To trust you. Guard us. Guard us from depression. With the things of this world. Frustration. And anger. Lord, help us to walk in your truth. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. My dear friends. It's going to be a great day because the Father loves you, Jesus is with you, and the Holy Spirit's going to guide you. Those are good things for those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ. That's good news, right? We're not in this alone. We're not in this alone. The Father loves us, Jesus is with us, and the Holy Spirit is guiding us. This is good, good news. All right? So with this in mind... 
Remember to like, share, go outside, or rest if you need to. And help your community experience Christ. Bye.